Good afternoon uh, for all of you on the Eastern time zones, and good morning to use to use. That's good. That's a good start. Uh, good morning to all of you in the zones out west. And uh, for those of you out west, you can, of course, be um, very uh, uh, wondering what's going on out the east in the northeast. There's supposed to be a whole garbage load of snow, and I think I heard somewhere between 12 and 18 inches of snow. You lucky folks, you and also I think down in the south so uh, this is a good thing for you to be on today you can stay warm and this is the next webinar in our series with Sun is Life and this one today is the experience making memorable moments in salon service so as uh, you know in the past um, we I always kinda give a little message here and I'm gonna do that right now that indoor tanning has become a commodity in too many salons and this is something I really believe that it has done that and to gain market share salons need to sell and provide a memorable experience that transforms tanners from commodity buyers to fans and ambassadors of your salon John Farr has spoken if that means anything okay now if you're uh, on the webinar today you know that we've got a few housekeeping notes here the audio transmission is one way so unfortunately we can't hear you tell us how terrible a job we're doing but you can write in the chat boxes and tell us that um, you can ask, uh, of course, by the chat box. The webinar will last about 60 minutes, and actually, I, I think I lied there because it's probably going to be close to 75 minutes because we have so much material to cover, and I've got a fantastic panelist to speak with us today, and I'll introduce him in just a minute. And there will be a brief Q&A, but even though the Q&A is at the end, just put your questions, as you know, we've done this in the past, just put them in the comment box, and we will answer them as we go. And if you have to reconnect, you know you've got the webinar invite number. <clears throat> this recording will be available very soon. I'm guessing, uh, uh, David, it'll be uh, available later on today or tomorrow. If he's there, David. Oh, yeah. Yes. Folks, just yes. go to johnrfar.com. We have the uh, replays there. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. The webinar series is brought to you by IST Magazine, as you know, the best trade magazine that's out there, at least in my very humble and uh, uh, crazy opinion. But uh, Sun is Life program for training and certification, and of course uh, our company, the Power Group, been uh, in consulting in this crazy industry for 24 years. And that's me. And I tell you, Tony, I hope you don't get too sick there. But I got a. Um, Oh, darn it, it didn't do it. Or it did do it. Yeah, okay. Did did that make you uh, seasick, Tony, when you were bouncing around there? Uh, no, my computer has so many viruses from McFarland, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> well, I'm, Tony, very, don't I'm you, very glad. Don't you I'm blame very, that picture on me, buddy. <laughs> I'm very glad that you brought that name up because uh, with us today, folks, is this guy. Uh, if, if you haven't had a chance at one of the trade shows to see David McFarland do a presentation, he is fantastic. He's very animated, great interpersonal skills. He's wonderful to work with. Just got out of prison yesterday, and uh, we are just so happy to have him <laughs> with us. And so, would you please, would you please welcome the salon whisperer himself, Mr. David McFarland? Now, this is this is where we should have an applause track, uh, David Fire. We should. It's too bad that go to doesn't have that. You know. Um, David McFarland, what is that on your shoulder? You know, at first when I saw that, I thought maybe it was a bird or something. I, yeah, was... first of all, if we're going to pump up my ego a little bit and get me ready for this type of show, I'm already nervous as it is. I've already thrown up twice, and if we're going to, I, I, we're going to need that applause effect because that would have made gave me a little confidence. Okay. Not, yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. You got to stroke. And, you got to stroke the salon whispers ego a little bit. Yes. And and you all know right, and well, I will. And I'll do that for you, David. I'll tell you, you know something? Uh, I love that shirt. I had one of those 31 years ago. <laughs> well, li That's listen, really John, a great shirt. Listen, do you John, plug that in? I mean, does it light up when you plug it in? Or the is power of plan, John. When you wear a picnic table plan shirt, um, <laughs> this is one of my secret weapons. This is how I get young salon professionals. They literally become hypnotized by the bold pattern and are that. much more open to my radical training approaches, John. <laughs> Well, I know you I'm do a, a great job picnic, with that. John. I'm a mobile picnic, John. You know what? I like to live the experience. <laughs> a mobile and, picnic. Like and this is the experience that I'm offering is at any given moment I could lie down and you could have a picnic on me. 
I think we'll pass on that one. Yeah, I'm not um, touching that one. Well, but, maybe you know, some of the guests would disagree. You maybe you, know that, you three don't want to, but maybe some of the guests do. Well, the, I just I want people to know that are attending today. We we ask you to be on because we know that you're a good trainer and uh, you have a lot of great ideas about. Uh, how to make the experience in the salons wonderful. And so it is wonderful, David, to have you on there. And I know we're going to have you on here many more times going forth. And uh, just to let people know who you represent, these are some of the brands. I'm sure they're familiar with these brands of uh, lotions. And, you know, the neat thing about this for you, those of you that are attending, is that um, Tony Brown and I have talked for a long time about having representation from the supply side of the industry on these webinars, but our hesitation was we didn't want to turn the webinars into a selling thing. So uh, David McFarland has been wonderful because he's going to share his experience on what we call the experience in a salon without getting into um, some big sales pitch. And that's, uh, so it was, uh, it was wonderful to have him as the first, he's the first uh, supply side speaker you're the very first, David. You're the first one we've ever asked. Wow. Yeah. Aren't you? You're, you're privileged, buddy. I, wow. I, actually didn't, you know, I actually didn't want anything to do with you, but Tony just held his breath until he turned blue, and so then we said, okay, all right, we'll put uh, hey, David Hey, far on. the feeling's mutual. Okay, we're gonna, buddy. <laughs> we're we're going to end up in some fights here, and the, and the, and the people I listening see that. I can it. see that. And I'm a wimp, so I'm going to lose. Okay, <laughs> so we also have with us today uh, David Farr, our tech wizard. David, are you there? I am here. Hello, everyone. Yeah, good. Okay. And let's, uh, oh, you like that transition? I love that. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's get right to it. What I call the crisis in indoor tanning American, I believe that we definitely have one and it has to be addressed. So what is this crisis? Well, it's not the tan tax. I mean, when the tan tax went through July 1st, 2010, uh, you heard people screaming about that from coast to coast. And it is a pain in the neck. There's no question about it. But that's not the crisis in tan America. The tan mom are very, very annoying and uh, some of the worst publicity I think that this industry has ever gotten. But it's not her. Could it be the FDA? Uh, we don't know. You know, the FDA is kind of a scary corner to go around. Uh, bad weather. Um, I'm going to share this with you. For the month of January, our client base averaged, I think, about 4% ahead of January of last year. But generally speaking, the business was down. And I know David uh, McFarland, um, I don't know what people have told you or what you've heard from uh, your distributors, but uh, January was not a fantastic month by any measure. No, I, I've heard the same thing. Everybody's expressed that, um, you know, for a host of reasons, the weather being one of them. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, it, it, Mother Nature, you, it's, it's kind of, it's a little hard to fight, fight her sometimes. Well, I know, like, uh, for example, uh, one of our clients over in Indiana, his salon in January was closed, I believe, four days. Uh, he couldn't get to the salon because of, there was so much snow. And, you know, when you can't open a salon at all, you know, sometimes you think, oh, geez, we had a terrible day. We only did $150. Well, when you have four days when you do $0, that's really bad. Well, so here's the economy, the other thing, John. Uh, the What's that? The other thing, John, is that what ha I think a big reason that uh, the, that people are feeling a little bit down in their sales is because I I know of a lot of salons that kick off season with events in January. So not True. only True. so there's what's happened is is I know I can probably name ten events, big events that people have every year that were actually canceled because of weather. So. Uh, you know, now they're going. They've bumped those events into February, into you know, um, in the beginning of March. But that always hurts when they are counting on, you know, yeah. one of their great customer appreciation events to kick off the season, and they can't get people there too because of weather. That's tough. Yeah, and it affected. It also affected the trade shows too. I think some of the attendance at some of the trade shows was was down because this was such a um, uh, incredibly bad January. I, you know, we I've. We've, I've lived here as a suburb of Cincinnati uh, for 11 years, and this is by far the worst winter. This is, I moved here from Des Moines, Iowa. I might as well be back in Des Moines. This weather is so bad. So, so anyway, we also, of course, we have the economy, and we have the continual bad press. People are always after us. And as you know, there's legislation banning tanning under 18 and a few more states than there was before. Um, it, so it's, you know, some of the stuff... You know, I guess my uh, issue is, is the crisis in indoor tanning America, is it really 
David McFarland's plaid shirt. I don't know. <laughs> it's just a thought. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Well, no, I actually, think it's I think it's probably more the skinny jeans that I wear. The, <laughs> I the skinny right. jeans. But the crisis, I think, at Tan America is the experience, and that's what I think what we're we're suffering right now, or shall we say, the lack of experience. Now, some of you that are on this call are going to say, "Hey, man, the experience in our salon is wonderful," and maybe it is. That that's terrific. But I can tell you that in general, for a person that deals with salons every single day, and it's rare even in a seven-day week that I don't deal with a salon, I'm going to tell you that the lack of experience is one of the big problems that we have. It's just not something that gets people crazy anymore. So what are we trying to accomplish in this webinar? <clears throat> the status of indoor tanning that exists today in most salons, we're going to talk about that. The research that points out what is lacking in experience. The experience economy. Now, I want to thank David McFarland because he turned me on to uh, a study that was done in a book that was done a few years back called The Experience Economy, and it really it resonated with me almost immediately when I read it. Uh, also, we are going to talk about a better awareness of the issues and open discussion on how to uh, correct the problem, and a development of a plan that is a game changer in your salon market, because I think we need some of those. And then, of course, uh, construction of a strong defensive wall. The, the bigger uh, the better job that you do in the experience, the higher that defensive wall is that to protects you from some big mega chain coming in and taking your business away or your discretionary indulgence dollars going someplace else. And of course, there's a reward for actions for changing the experience and making it better in your salons, and there is definitely penalties for standing still. So we're kind of at a point in our industry, and I think David McFarland and Tony, you'd probably agree with me, we're at a point where you can't stand still anymore in tanning. You're either moving ahead or you're moving back. And I see people that think that, well, I'm just going to stay right where I'm in right now, status quo, and they think that this is just going to work. And it is absolutely not going to work because it's too competitive out there. So um, if I can get this, uh, this uh, slideshow to work here. Okay. So here's what I was mentioning before, uh, and these are references that you can go to. You can Google and get some information on. The Experience Economy, and those are the authors, Harvard Business School. I think I've heard of them before. And one of my favorites is called First Break All the Rules. I've mentioned it several times before in other webinars. And it is an excellent book about uh, skills, knowledge, and talent, which we're going to get into in a bit. And then the Animal School. Now, the Animal School, uh, this was originally back to a gentleman by the name of George Rivas, uh, back right prior to uh, the U.S. entry into World War II. And that sounds like we're going back a long ways. But it, it is such a simplistic approach to what one should do for the right people in your salon. And, and it's just very powerful. And we'll talk about that in just a minute as well. So uh, indoor tanning, here's the issue I think that we have. And uh, David, you just jump in anytime you want, but indoor tanning has become a commodity, and there are dangers of only selling a commodity. Uh, first of all, a commodity can be duplicated very easily. If that's what your tanning is, if that's what, what you sell, is just pigment augmentation, someone coming in to sit in your tanning beds, if that's what you sell, you can be duplicated very easily by the next tanning salon around the corner. And of course, when you get to a commodity, if that's what you have, the ultimate way to differentiate commodities is price. And if you differentiate on price alone, uh, that leads to business failure. Because any time you get down to where you're throwing prices back and forth, you got yourself a real problem. And those who buy a commodity are loyal to price and availability only. So if your tanning is just a commodity, they're going to look at your price, somebody else's price, and if you're available, if you have got uh, don't have too long of a line at this time of the year, that's where they're going. Commodities can be easily substituted. So how is the commodity of tanning being handled is the question for the day. And uh, we're going to show you some things here. If I can, uh, okay. Well, I would say, John. Go ahead, but jump in, David. I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, it, it's, I think it's the death knell, the death knell of any type of beauty industry indulgence product service center the death knell is when 
your product and your service and your goods can be can be considered a commodity. Once you've yep, gotten yep. to that point, um, it, it, it sends it should it should send shivers down an owner's spine because Absolutely. because you have no way to set yourself apart anymore. And Wait. but that's the bad side. The good side of this is that there's a way. There's an amazing way to get yourself out of being a commodity. And, um, and that's what a big part of this presentation is going to be about today is the experience, as we call it, and how to change that um, whole fabric within your salon so um, you're no longer a commodity. Because yeah, the, you, the you truth of it is, goods and, good, and goods and services, they're just not enough anymore. Just offering a good and a service is not enough. A whole there's a whole new economic order that's happening, and I think tanning salons, um, you know, deserve and need to be a part of that. I it, absolutely, and and I think what I'm going to do here, David, is I'm going to show them something from uh, Secret Shopper reports. Uh, I've shown them a little bit of this in the past, but I'm going to show it again here to kind of emphasize what you're looking at here is a screenshot of a partial. It's a partial screenshot of a Secret Shopper report. And you'll you'll see the points that could be earned in certain areas, and then I'm going to show you um, I'm going to show you what the average for our company when we've done these secret shopper reports because we've done over 300 of them. If I can get my okay, all right, here we go. All right, so. So these 300 secret chopper reports were done between 2011 and 2013. If you take a look <clears throat> at this, you'll see the points that could be earned on the left there where it says maximum points, and then you'll see where it says points earned. And these are averages as you go down. So if you look at the first few, what's the immediate area in front of the salon uh, free of debris, trash, cigarette butts? Okay, just about everybody gets that, and, and there's no real big issues. The big issue is go down to... Uh, where it says, were you sincerely smiled, greeted warmly by first employee you saw? Did you feel welcomed or just another tanner? And you see that the max point, points you could get on that was five. Our average over 300 secret chopper reports was two. Did the employee attempt to establish a rapport with you before sales pitch was started? Uh, and you know, uh, and David and I, we, we both talk about this all the time. People buy from those that they know, like, and trust. And you could see that the maximum points was five, and the average over those 300 was mm -hmm. one. Just to take it all the way to the bottom, you can see that the maximum points that you could get just off of this screenshot was 68, and the average over 300 was 26 points. Now, there have been some secret shoppers that we did that were absolutely phenomenal, but that's not the, the usual experience. And again, this whole conversation today is about the experience in tanning salons. Uh, and I don't know why my uh, seems like I have this problem every time of just getting these slides. I guess it's I guess getting slides to move forward is too techy for me. But anyway, let's go to the the involvement of the experience economy and then how we transform customers. And this is super important because again, we're not in the business of pigment augmentation. We're in the business of transforming people. And and David and I were just talking about this this morning. You know, just about every customer that comes into your salon, something there's things going on in their life, some drama, some major, some minor. But really, if we're going to provide an experience, that person should be leaving the salon changed. Even if it's for an hour or two hours, they should feel fantastic, a lot better than they were when they walked in the salon. You know what I'm saying, Dave, David Mack? Oh, just, just, I mean, that, that in itself, if you can bring that type of, feeling into your salon with every guest you know notice I don't I, I try never to call them customers I try to call them guests because that's guest really what they yep. are they're a guest of your salon and your environment that day and if they don't feel transformed and amazing when they walk out of there you don't have a whole lot of value to them that's when it, you and, become insanely valuable to them as well and, and and I'm going to go through a couple more of what you, basically what you just said. It, again, we were talking about a commodity business charges for undifferentiated products. I mean, it's a, a bag of kitty litter is a bag of kitty litter. I'm not trying to equate that to tanning, but we certainly don't want to think people to think that they can go any place and get the same uh, experience. 
a goods business charges for distinctive tangible things, a service business charges for activities you perform, an experience business, which is what Tanny Salons, and, and David, you said it, said it very well this morning when we were talking, you were saying, if there's ever been an industry that could profit from supplying a true differentiated experience, it is the tanning salon industry. Yeah, absolutely, I'm, and that's, what, that's why I'm so excited. I try to transfer that excitement to all the salons across the country because there is a huge opportunity there because we are so positioned just by what we do, just by the fact that somebody can come and lay in an amazing bed, put on a luxurious lotion, leave that salon f looking better about, you know, looking and feeling better. We are so positioned to be, we could probably be one of the best experience providers for an industry that there oh, ever absolutely. was. Yeah, absolutely we could. Because you look, at, you look at the fitness business and people will talk about how the fitness business in some ways is maybe competitive with us. Uh, but really, fitness is something that someone has to do. I go into tanning. I can feel great when I leave the tanning salon. I don't have to do anything, but you don't have to do nothing. I can fall no, asleep no, no, no. in the bed. No, you take no, no. The, a gym, a gym and fitness takes a lot of discipline. This is does. completely no discipline. This is somebody catering to your every need, and when you leave there, you feel you don't have to do nothing to get it. And 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 when you have that, you can charge for the benefit that customers or guests. I'll use your word, David. Guests receive That's uh, by being part of it, and so. You know, so why worry about all of this? Well, the goal is, and, and we talked about this just earlier, differentiation of your salon's experience from the competitors. Because if everybody is the same, then it just, how can you chart? You can't necessarily uh, open up a new salon tomorrow and, and be double what anybody else is charging for a 30-day package or for an EFT. But when you develop that reputation for having that great experience, it makes a significant difference. Um, hey, and let's I'm let's do this for a second, John. Let's make sure that we let's make sure that as far as the word competitors, that we make sure that we establish the fact that the competitor doesn't. It it, it very rarely means the the salon that you're competing with. More than that, look at it more the big picture. In the big picture, it means any other business that can provide a great experience for somebody. Though that's who you're competing um, with too not yep. just other salons. Yeah, you know, and matter of fact, interesting you bring that up, I know, because every once in a while I'll go and get a massage, and there's a, uh, there's a big chain here that's called Massage Envy, and I think it's in a lot of cities. But I've there's a place, that. okay, well, there's a place I go to, and I'll tell you, from the time I walk in the door until I leave, I'm treated like some grand potentate that's arrived. I mean, the, the, the experience is so good, and I know I pay at least 20 bucks more for that 60-minute massage than I would if I went to Massage Envy. But it, it is such a, a wonderful experience, I'm going to do it. Now, in speaking of experience, David, I'd like you to jump in here and talk to, uh, you know, to talk about this whole thing about coffee as an example. Oh, this, is, this, is an awesome, this is an awesome illustration because it really, I think it's really easy to understand. So you have basically, caught it, when, when it comes to coffee, okay, when it comes to buying a cup of coffee, um, you know, depending on what the business that's actually selling the coffee, it can be one of three or actually four economic offerings. It can be a commodity, which a commodity is that's you going and getting the beans, the, the actual coffee beans, and, and grinding your own coffee and making your own cup of coffee. And you can see the cost on that is very little, um, you know, way less than a dollar, probably 20 cents a cup. Then you can also offer coffee as a good or let's say the, the coffee that you would buy in a grocery store. Now this is coffee that's already been ground for you. It's already been packaged for you. It's ready to go. All right, And that probably comes out to around 40 or 50 cents a, a cup. Then coffee can also be offered as a service. That would be your Dunkin' Donuts, your McDonald's. They brew the coffee for you and sell it to you in a very fast way and you get the cup, cup of coffee all bought. Now, when we take it to the experience level, when we take it to that, look at how much higher, remember, you're talking about the same cost, the same cost all the way across the board to make the cup of coffee, in essence, pretty close. But when you get into the experience, which would be like your Starbucks 
or places like that, look how much more money they can get for that same cup of coffee. That same thing that was a commodity for 20 cents a cup, a cup now, can, now you can get up to $5. And I think that's not even accurate because I've been in Starbucks recently and I've spent $7 on a cup yes, of coffee. Yes, yes, I have too. I have too. And, 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 David, and, and David, that article that came out in USA Today yesterday that was talking about Starbucks was very uh, timely for what you're talking about. There's more than 20,000 Starbucks in more than 60 countries charging something like you said that you could pay less than a buck for someplace, but it's the, what, it's the, it's the baristas, right? I mean, they, we don't call them, they're not clerks, they're baristas, right? They're baristas. It's unbelievable. It, now, 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 let's nail this down here for the listeners. Let's nail this down for all the salons out there listening. The experience here means, we're not talking about experience meaning they have a lot of experience making it. We're talking about the experience of what they get when they walk into a Starbucks. Is the co you know, you first you ask yourself, is the coffee that much better? I mean, as a matter of fact, John and I were talking this morning that when we first went to Starbucks, the coffee really didn't taste that much better. As a matter of no, fact, it, it was really kind of bitter. I'm addicted to it now. <laughs> but more than the coffee, I'm addicted to the experience of going in there. The experience of everything going on in there from even down to the littlest detail like their their vernacular they almost speak a different language because when I first would go in there I'd say you know like hey I, I'd like a mild cup of coffee with some cream and sugar well what that really is is a tall blonde <laughs> misto brave is what that really is so is I had to learn it was fun for me to learn the language and I challenge myself each time when I go in there to say it better each time so the barista I like the baristas to be impressed with me because you know how fun they are. All the baristas at almost every Starbucks, they're talkative, they can joke with you. They make going in there and buying a cup of coffee, and that's why they can get five and seven dollars for a cup of coffee. And that same and David, the same model, applies the same applies to oh, what you've talked about with the birthday cake. Love love this. Uh, if, if for girls listening, this is an amazing fun thing to look at. Look at the evolution of the birthday cake. Okay, first back. And and the, what do you call it, John? The agra agra agrarian, agrarian society. The agrarian stage, yeah. Farmers. Right, that's, and, yeah. that's when farmers and stuff um, actually got all the raw ingredients themselves to make a, a cake from scratch. Okay, that would be a commodity. Then when goods came in, when the goods way of making a cake came in, that's when Duncan Hines and them and Betty Crocker said, "Okay, we're going to put all the ingredients in one box together for you to save time and money." Or to save time, excuse me, and it costs a little bit more money. Then we advanced to when bakeries became big. And remember, most people will go get their cakes. They would order it from Publix or the local bakery. That's when the whole entire cake is made for you. Then now take it to the experience level. Once again, look at the leap. Now what do you do? You go to some place ending in something jump or something plex or Chuck E. Cheese or one of them. And what do they do? They create the entire memory for you. Yep. They make the cake. They supply the place. They supply the entertainment. And that, you buy the experience of the entire birthday party now. And that would be, um, and, and that the beautiful part about both of these examples is that these so easily can be applied to tanning. Well, and the thing of it is, the thing of it is, we're, we're talking so much about experience today because the truth of it is that Ten years ago, this industry didn't have to worry so much about the experience because there wasn't a lot of tanning salons. You and and people have heard me say this before. You didn't have ten years ago. You didn't have to be good. You just had to be open. But today, it is so competitive out there. Uh, whether it's like you said earlier, David, whether it's tanning salons or other people that can take indulgence dollars out of the market. So let me do this. So what I'd like to do, uh, uh, David Wizard, if you're there would like to do some polls uh, so uh, we can all see uh, who we've got on uh, who we've got on our uh, webinar today so David if you're there let's uh, let's get some polls open and uh, find out who we've got today sure definitely let's uh, let's do that so it should be on the screen right now folks it says are you a manager or owner just please go ahead and click on the screen uh, one of the two options right there and we will uh, report the results here in just a tiny bit. 
So just give everyone a couple more seconds here to cast their vote. Manager, David, I wonder owner. if we should ask every, every, everybody who all owns a plaid shirt like David. We can add no, that for mind. next time. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, thank, yeah. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, John. <laughs> okay. I'll never wear that plaid shirt again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we have 55% managers and 45% owners. Okay. All right. Next and poll. the next poll is how many salons are in your tanning company? So the three choices on the screen, folks, are one to two, three to five, uh, six or more. Let's go ahead and click on the screen there and let us know how many salons are in your tanning company. And we'll close this one down in three, two, one. And today we have 84% uh, saying one to two, 8% saying three to five, or, or another 8% saying six or more. Okay, poll and uh, poll number three is please show your lotion sales per tan average. So and this is if they know it, David. Uh, some folks maybe they don't always maybe stay up on that number, but if they know it, uh, it would. I think uh, for all of us, I think uh, you know it might be interesting to see what it is. Okay, so you folks can see this, the options on the screen. Go ahead and click on the most appropriate option to you. And we'll give everyone just a few extra seconds here to kind of configure this there. And, and we are, and I am putting people on the spot, and I apologize to the audience. I, we probably should have lo let you know that before this, but uh, it was uh, with David McFarland on here from Performance Brands, I thought it might be kind of interesting to him to see what the, the average uh, per transaction is. Okay, so 42% uh, say not sure, so you did put them on the spot apparently. Apparently, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> 13% said uh, 50 cents to $1.50. 23% said $1.51 to $2.25. 15% said $2.26 to $3. And then we had 8% saying more than $3 per tan average. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, sorry, people, for all the polls, but uh, we thought you might find this interesting. What's number four there? Were your lotion sales up, down, or about even in 2013 versus 2012? Go ahead and cast your vote. Pretty pleased there. And we'll close it down in three, two, one. And our results for this one were 30% said up, 37% uh, said down, and then 33% said about even. So really close kind of three-way tie mm -hmm. on that one. Okay. And finally, how was your January 2014 total sales versus January 2013? I guess once again, we're kind of putting them on the spot here. Well, and, I, and I'm curious, and I think a lot of people on this call, David, would be curious because uh, as, as David McFarland and I were talking earlier, January was not uh, what you call a fantastic month, weather-wise and all that stuff, so I'm kind of curious. Okay, so we definitely have uh, people voting on this, so we'll close it down in three, two, one. And so we have 19% said up, uh, but an overwhelming 70% said down, and 12% said even. Well, for those of you that were down, I think we understand some of the reasons, and uh, I guess if misery can have company. So let's get back to our theme about how we create an experience and get that business back up. And really, what should you do in your salon to create differentiation, which we talked about before, to get away from you know, just being compared by a commodity, uh, memorable experience, and then transformation of customers. And uh, you know, I, these are some obvious things to you, of course. I mean, having upgraded equipment, there's no question that Sizzle does sell. We are a business that... Uh, People walk in and they see that you have a new bed and it looks like it just came in from Mars someplace. You know, it looks like a spaceship, and and they love that. And of course, consistent replacement of worn bulbs and acrylics. Uh, I've been to some salons where there's that big crack in an acrylic and wondering, gee, I don't know that I'd want to lay in that thing. Uh, also, a fanatical. I use the word fanatical commitment to sanitize beds in rooms. Uh, there's nothing creepier than laying down on somebody else's DNA when you figure it hasn't been cleaned. And, and that goes back to the subject of also deep cleaning, too. It's not just cleaning the bed itself, but it's keeping those rooms deep cleaned because 
boy, consumers, they'll see that, they'll notice that. Uh, updated displays, I see when I go in, and, and David McFarland, you've probably seen and heard of this yourself too, that you know, you go into a salon where they have a sale on lotions on a table, but that sale has been a sale for the last 90 days. It, you know, when you do that, it, it's not fresh, and people know that this is just baloney when you're telling that this is some kind of a special price. Now, by the way, David, don't most of the um, of the lotion suppliers and distributors, I mean, they've, they've always got deals going on all the time for closeouts and that kind of thing. Always. Always. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure some of you have heard, I mean, sometimes the prices that you can get on these closeouts are just incredible. And, I mean, if, I, if it were me and I owned the salon, I would have a deal going on lotions on a closeout or something like that. Not that, you know, you always wanted to sell the closeouts, but, I mean, you, the margin that you can make on that is, is fantastic. I'd have something fresh and an inside salon promotion going all the time. Uh, of course, competitive marketing. Uh, I mean, that sounds kind of crazy. How you know? How is that differentiation? But if you don't market, or if you don't do something that's different from your competition, you know, it's it's not going to help you because you got to be out there. You've got to be in people's faces. And of course, uh, something very near and dear to Tony Brown's heart, and really to all of us, is certification. So this is something that's also part of the experience. When I walk into a salon and I'm in a tan and I see the Wall of Fame. It really gives me some credit, a feeling of credibility. So, uh, certification, and, and I, I tell you, it's just amazing how many salons that I deal with, where there's still a good share of the population that work in there that are not certified. And I, I don't understand because I know what uh, Tony has with the Son of Life program is not an expensive program, and there's so much value for it that I just don't understand why people are not certified. Because you hang that up on the wall. Man, that really uh, that really sends a message, and of course, cleanly merchandise lobbies. I've been in the salons, um, you know, uh, David Mack. I don't know if you've been in ones like this, but I go in there sometimes, and I think they're a flea market because many, got, many. Yeah, I know, and it just it blows my mind because there's, you know, twelve or fifteen different things they're trying to sell that it just to me doesn't seem like has any parallel to what we're doing what we're trying to do as an experience and uh, to me you know again flea markets the only word I can use um, but when we're talking about this differentiation and transformation and memorable experiences the most critical element of differentiation to produce your unique experience and it's there's no question that it is the the most critical is skills knowledge and talent and we're talking here about people and I'm going to talk for a second about this first break all the rules the Gallup research from 1999 and let's just do some definitions here so we understand uh, what we're talking about skills of course are the how to's of a job such as computer usage which is a skill that I can assure you I have none of and David mm -hmm. will back me up on this David fire will tell you yes yes my father is a computer idiot and he's right this is why sometimes I can't get the damn slides to advance. You can tell that I'm an idiot when it comes to that. <laughs> David McFarlane, are you a good computer person? Negative, Ghost Rider. Negative. <laughs> Negative. I, I am not. Um, I, ha I ask my kids. I ask my kids to do things. Sometimes they do tweets for me. They uh, handle all kinds of stuff. I mean, they're way more advanced than I am. My daughter at, at eight years old is probably more advanced than I am. You know? Yeah, I, I, I think Tony. I think Tony Brown is probably Tony. You're probably great with computers because you're, you're a smart guy. So you're probably. Of course he are, is. He's got a high yeah. Q. He's. Yeah, he does. Well, of course he does. I am. I am when McFarland's not sending me viruses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better. Get, you know what? You should know when you get an email from me that you better have your your very strongest virus spamware um, up and running. <laughs> Well, Tony, just so it's only a computer virus, never mind, never mind. We won't uh, talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, but also when you're talking about I skills. I do find Tony very handsome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Well, for well, for one thing, I can understand that he's got shoulders on him like a Brahma bull. I know. I like mean, He could geez. protect you. He could protect you. That's what oh I see. Oh, my God, yes. I feel he's safety. Pretty, you know, when, when, I think, I look at, when I look at Tony last, Brown, I feel safety. <laughs> well, when I, I know his last name is Brown, but I I tend to want to call him Vinny No Neck because he's hey, you know this Vinny looks like Vinny No Neck. Oh, I hey, love that. Hey, I, hey, hey Vinny No Neck. 
Well, you know what? I don't make hey, you get listen. your people certified. Hey, I don't get yes, mad. Yes, yes, yes. I don't. I don't get mad. Now, you you guys have mad. covered the range. Tony the Greek to, to Minnie No Neck in less than <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> listen, well, I don't get angry at salons. When I just get upset, and when I get upset, he gets angry. <laughs> Of course, you're talking about your alter ego, David. I mean, you have a lot of problems there. So I mean, I do. I have a lot of voices and a lot of personalities. <laughs> That's that right. I'm like you don't agree with any of them. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, skills. Uh, you can learn computers. You can learn basic selling skills. You can, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're good at the selling skills, but you can learn them. You can be an organized person. That's a skill that you can learn. Uh, these are just some e examples. Uh, the capability to learn is is also a skill to a certain extent. And I just read this um, just the other day, and it just blew my mind. It just it has nothing to do with canning, but I thought it was an interesting fact. This Marilyn Voss Savant, and and how ironic that her last name is Savant, that when she was nine years old, she was measured as having an IQ of 228. Now. David McFarland or Tony or did the other David, I don't know about you, but that means that Marilyn's IQ is worth four times mine. It's higher than my bowling average. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't imagine somebody at nine years old having an IQ. Of, but anyway, the, there's a certain skill, the ability to learn, you can, you can get that. And knowledge such as basic math, uh, the tanning effects on skin. You know, again, boy, here's that message. Everyone should be certified. Just... There's no question about it, and I think it's 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 a, a message that Tony has been preaching now for some time. We need to get away from all of this talk about health benefits and, and that whole debate, get into the professionalism of what we do, and man, to me, one of the biggest starts of that is when that person walks in the salon and sees these certifications because they know then that those employees have gone through some good basic training. Uh, because how can you trust somebody that, that you don't know if they've been trained or not, and they uh, they put you in the wrong bed and they put you in for the wrong time. So that's great anyway. Point, can John, that's a great. Go ahead, point. David. Yeah. That, that's a great point. I was just thinking of a, a good example for that. That I was just thinking of the other day. I was, I was in a mall, and um, I was in uh, I was in the um, you know, like Nordstroms or one of those, and I was I was wowed by the by you know in the middle areas where they have all the makeup counters. You know, they have like Clinique and Elizabeth Arden and um, all those different counters and what I was so impressed by was how professional um, these, uh, these girls that work those booths are and um, that's something that I always thought would be a great way, you know, great thing to emulate in tanning because um, you, just, you just have an immediate trust for these girls they, and they are so amazing at selling because that credibility comes with them, and they're wearing like smocks. They almost look like doctors. Yep. You know, um, but just that 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 kind of reminds me of it. You know, everyone should be certified. Everyone should, you know, have those professional accolades behind them. And it's very much like those estheticians or those um, girls that work the makeup counters. Um, that, that that's like to talk about a blueprint to follow. So. Yeah, I mean, I we can't uh, we can't afford as an industry to just take somebody and throw them in there and not give them the training, not only from an operational standpoint, but certainly from selling, and, and certainly we need to have them certified. Now, let me um, let me just stop here just for a second, guys. Um, there's a couple questions that came up here, and I apologize for not seeing them earlier. Uh, Paula, I know that you're on, and you said that you could barely hear the seminar. Uh, please, if you would uh, just uh, uh, chat us back and tell us if you can hear it now. Because uh, sorry, I didn't see that earlier. And also, Brenda, uh, I know that you're on, and you said that uh, you're sunless only. And just to let you know, too, by the way, Tony and I have talked about a webinar here in the very near future where we're going to go into uh, the webinar is going to be wrapped around sunless and how to make sensational selling off of sunless. So um, just uh, stay with us and and uh, be patient, Brenda. We're going to have a a webinar that'll be a knockout for you and, and hopefully for everybody else. But Paula, let us know if uh, if uh, okay. She says she can hear now. Okay, and uh, she'd like to. What does it say? Here? Paula would like to know if she can have Tony's phone. Never mind. Never mind. We won't get into that. Okay. All right. So, but uh, knowledge, tanning effects on the skin. You can, of course, uh, uh, you know that's one of those things that you can, as far as knowledge goes. Um, 
arguments countering tanning bad press. Again, that's knowledge that uh, you can be taught. You can be uh, you can get knowledge about equipment, lotions, products, product features, and benefits, and uh, that's that's great stuff because uh, when it gets down to people making a selection, what they're going to do with their tan plan, you need to know which equipment to, that's going to fit their their plans, and of course lotions. I mean, David, I mean, <laughs> you could probably give us a hundred arguments or a hundred different uh, features and benefits on your line, and you you probably know the other lines too. So. Uh, again, these are all knowledge, skills and knowledge-based things, uh, but then we got to talk about what the Gallup poll, and Gallup organization, if you're not familiar, Gallup has been predicting presidential elections for decades. They do a lot of polling. They're one of the most famous polling companies in this country. And when you talk about natural talent, natural is defined as the natural reoccurring actions and attitudes uh, of an individual. It's what comes naturally to them. And it finds, Gallup finds that natural talents are in every, every walk of life. And just some examples, uh, they found that in their research that hotel cleaning staff, uh, the ones that were really good at it, had a natural pride. It came with them. It was something that they didn't have to be taught, and it was something they didn't have to read a manual on. They had a natural pride in transforming guest rooms to becoming incredibly hospitable. Uh, although I think we've all probably experienced, uh, David, you've done a lot of traveling like I have, and so is Tony and so is the other David. I think we've all uh, had those experiences where you wondered where those uh, natural pride in cleaning rooms were. Well, I stay intense, John. Uh, but <laughs> to save well, you're very money, intense, but, yeah, so. yeah, uh, so I keep my tent nice and clean. There's nobody that cleans it for me, but I am. Well, you have a natural I, pride I, to do that. I'm meticulous about how my tent looks. <laughs> a lot of times you'll see me out, guys, you'll see me outside of an event. You ever seen a, a tent outside of an event? That's me. Just go ahead and come and visit. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got a phone number here, uh, David, for uh, Happy Acres. I'm going to call them here in a minute. Um, <laughs> We, we need to get you in a room over there. Is really... Okay, and okay, like an auto mechanic. An auto mechanic has a has a sixth sense. I mean, I I've you know, there's a lot of auto mechanics that I I don't think can find their their backside with both hands. But I I take my car to an auto mechanic. He's been doing this for so many years. He doesn't even have to put a scope on there. It's like his ear. He's he's got a natural talent for that sort of thing, and he can tell me what's going on with my my car without really doing a whole lot. And having had the experience myself of working with uh, the pop king Michael Jackson years ago when I was in the uh, record business, I can tell you he was absolutely what I would consider a performer savant uh, because when you talk to him personally one-on-one, -on -one, he was very shy and very withdrawn, whatever. But man, when he got on stage, his natural talents, and if you ever saw a, a Michael Jackson concert, you'd know. I mean, this guy was just, he was a natural. I think it's the same thing when you're talking about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods got help in from his father, and, and his father gave him some skills, or helped him with his skills and his knowledge, but I think that when Tiger Woods was born, he had a lot of that in him. Uh, it just, this comes with it. It's like, uh, I've got a good accountant friend of mine. He's got a natural uh, ability at exactitude and results and definition. He just, that's the way he is. He, he just likes that. And then, <laughs> You, people will laugh at this. Some attorneys are natural at debate and listening. I think there might be a few people that would argue that some attorneys are natural at other things, which I think uh, protocol would prohibit me from saying what that would be. But uh, I think we all know what we're talking about there. Mm -hmm. um, at least I do with the number of <clears throat> marriages I've been through. Okay, so natural talent for tanning salons. Okay, talent, define. Natural reoccurring uh, actions and attitudes of an individual and really What's the origin of natural talents? Well, a lot of theories out there, but most people seem to feel, most research seems to feel, that it's partial DNA and early child socialization. Um, I have four children, and I, I don't get into a habit of bragging about them, but Mr. Wizard, who was on this call, when he was tested, um, and I'm not going to say something funny here. I actually am going to say something serious. But when David was tested as, I think, a six- or seven-year-old or eight-year-old, whatever, he was in the upper one percentile of reading comprehension. 
So when you want to know why he's a computer geek and uh, is so good at the technical stuff, the difference between David Farr and his father and a lot of other people, David only has to read something once. He reads it once and he gets it. Um, I mean, so David, that's the last time I'm going to say something nice about you, so there. But that's just, you know, it, 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 it was, I don't know where that came from in his DNA. He sure as heck didn't get it from me, and I, I can tell you he didn't get it from his mother, but he got it from someplace in our family. But because as a, your socialization process is usually done by the time you're about 10, 11, 12 years old. And it has to do with parents, and it has to do with teachers, whatever. But by the time you get to that, some of your natural talents are already coming out. And what is natural that you look for in stocking your your salon with what we call game changers? So, uh, you know, what are some of the actions and attitudes of your salon game changers? So we're talking about the people that work for you. These are some of the natural talents. And I'm going to stop here for a second. I have viewed David McFarland giving presentations and uh, have always enjoyed his presentations are wonderful because he's very animated he's got a lot of energy he's very enjoyable and there's nothing worse than sitting through a presentation whether it's uh, lotions or any other kind of presentation where someone that wants to put you into a coma with what they're saying but you believe me there's no sleeping in a David McFarland yeah, I think what he's trying to say ladies and gentlemen is <laughs> my dance moves are you know that, that's you really what, what we're getting at here <laughs> that that moonwalk of yours is incredible ah. I, you know, Oh, oh it's, I'm the Tampa Bay Moonwalk champion, buddy. <laughs> so when I'm when I'm when I'm going to show you stuff here today, it, a lot of it does it really, it really is a definition of David McFarland and some of the people I work with in salons that are so good that are natural talents. And I'm going to give you a, an example here in a minute of what that can do for for your salon. Now let me tell you something about myself as far as a natural. I the family I grew up in. Uh, I'm, my father was uh, unfortunately an alcoholic. He eventually got past that, but it was difficult. And if any of you that are on this call that grew up with a substance abuser, you know how uh, difficult that can be as a child. Fortunately for me, my mother's side of the family was a very uh, nurturing, very reinforcing part of the family. She was, uh, my mother was just absolutely wonderful, and her sisters were wonderful, whatever. So the kind of a person that I am is if you call me, at 4 o'clock in the morning, I will tend to be apologetic to you that I am not lucid enough to carry on a good conversation with you. Actually, it's almost 2 o'clock Eastern time, and I don't feel like I'm lucid enough. But at 4 o'clock in the morning, I probably wouldn't be. But that's who I am naturally. I, you know, I, What I do uh, with people, when, when retailers call me and they say, geez, John, I really need some help, whatever, I sometimes, and, and David I, McFarland, I know, I know what I'm describing right now, I know it's you. If somebody calls you, you will always help them. You will try to find a way to help them. And I think what we do, because we're kind of pleasers, we tend to probably maybe overdo that where we've got so many irons in the fire that we, we can't take care of all the people that, you know, we said, okay, I'll help you with this or help you with that, whatever. But that's the way that I am. That's just, I'm, I'm, that's my nature. Um, it, like I was talking about accountants before. The last thing you would ever want to do is to have me do your taxes for you because, you know, the government will own you because I'm just terrible at that. <laughs> but when it comes to this kind of a thing, like a natural talent for tanning salons, I understand this. Like collaborative desires to form relationship partnerships. I love forming relationship partnerships. Tony Brown has been an excellent partnership for me. I could have gone on and done webinars a year and a half ago without him, but he's been a great partner. And... Wildman McFarland here is going to be on a lot of our webinars because he's just been super to work with. So these are the kind of people that you want. Um, flexible, open for change. This is what you want at your counter. This is what you want in your salon. Somebody that is collaborative, that is flexible, um, that's communicative. You need somebody that is really good and makes the effort at communicating. And this is another thing, too, that I've, you know, you see this, a drive to serve. Uh, people that I've worked with, and, and if you saw our past webinars where I've had some managers on that were really good, these were ladies that had a real drive to serve. They they like placing the need of others before themselves. And you're saying, John, this is all great stuff. How do we get there? We'll talk about that in just a second. You want somebody that's inviting, somebody that invites you 
uh, into their life and you know you, you want to be invited uh, you know you, you want the invitation to be both ways invites and wants to be invited into the lives of others and you'll know that and David I know that you've gone into salons and knowing what an interactive person you are and how communicative you are when you go in you can tell somebody right away behind the counter that reaches out doesn't want to just sell you a package but wants to know something about you wants to wants to invest some time time in you and I know that when that happens that's got to be very impressive to you oh I love that I love that because those are the those are the ones that, um, that that people like to talk to and and the the thing of it is that this is the beautiful part of all this is that you know really when you when, when you embrace this experience thing and your salon embraces it you actually your people that work for you become cast members you're casting them because in the ultimate experience type of business your 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 business is a stage and these people, these collaborative people, the flexible, open for change, the communicative people, the ones that are drive to serve, they make perfect cast members for your theater. And, and that is what it is. And it, it, the sooner that you embrace that, that your business, your salon is actually a stage and that all the people play a part. They're, all your cast members that work for you or work there, they all play a part. And these are all the parts that they play. And you need to fill all these parts because if you don't have all these parts full, you can't provide the experience. Because as John said, I think what the, the big point here is the people are the key to the experience. Well, part, uh, well, they're a big part of the key. They're, they're an enormous part of the experience. They really are. And, I mean, you can have an average salon that doesn't have a tremendous amount of money in build-out, but boy, I'll tell you what, if, if you've got people that are highly interactive or they have these kind of natural talents, it, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, it, where you're looking at, when you talk about these natural talents, somebody that's a pleaser, that finds satisfaction in helping and satisfying. Uh, empathy, they can convey the understanding of the point of view of others. Uh, you know, you walk in, when, when you see somebody come in and they've got a scowl on their face and, and the, the, the Tani consultant says, so how's your day going? Oh, you don't want to know. Well, that should be a great cue right there to try to probe just a little bit, not too intrusive in their personal life, but just to ask them, oh, you know, why is the day so bad for you? What's what's going on? Or whatever, just to, just to see. And then sometimes people will open up, and what happens then is you start to become their friend. They, they, they've shared something personal with you, and they're going to ask for you or look for you the next time they come in. Um, predominant optimistic overview of life, and I know some of you out there, you, I know you know what I'm talking about, where you can get, sometimes you'll have employees and you wonder, you know, does this person ever have a good day in their life because it seems like that cloud follows them every place. But it, there are people that have a natural talent for putting that aside. Uh, I've got a, a gal that uh, I just put into a small chain out in California as the general manager, and I know what some of her personal life has been about. But when she shows up at the salons to do a tour of the salon or work with people, she parks all of that at the door. And I know that some of you in this call have been through that, where you've got this up and down yo-yo effect from employees, and that is that's very disruptive to customers when they come in. Um, and I uh, I like the word gregarious. Um, I like the company of other human beings. I know David. Everybody on this call does. I've seen Tony Brown work the room at a trade show. He's the same way. And this is the kind of people that you want. So all right now. What I'm going to do is move on here. Um, oh, and ethics, of course. Excuse me, I should have said that earlier. Um, I want to move on to the most important point. And David, this is something you and I talked about. All the stuff that we're talking about here, for the most part, can't be trained. It kind of comes with the package, the, the natural package. But natural warmth can't be trained. I mean, it, you know, if, you're, if you hire somebody, if you're in an, in an interview with them and you think they're a little bit standoffish, or they're a little bit reserved and they don't have that natural warmth in the interview, I don't know why you would think they're going to be that way when they get behind your counter. Uh, uh, David McFarland, we talked about natural warmth. Give me your two cents on that. Uh, natural warmth, um, it, it, you know, it makes, or it, it makes or breaks a salon for, for sure. Natural warmth, people are, are attracted to that. They're attracted to it. They're attracted to 
um, you know, they're attracted to somebody that makes them feel great about themselves. They're attracted to, since we're in a, a business that's about transforming people, warmth, um, people that are warmth, people that are not just indifferent. You know, there's nothing worse than walking into a salon and feeling somebody that feels indifference or, or that doesn't care. The polar opposite of that is somebody that's naturally warm. Somebody that as you walk in the salon, you can actually feel that from them. Yeah. You can yep. feel that they care. You can, and that's what, what once you, and that's called true engagement. You know, yep, not engaging exactly with right. the ring, not engagement yep. with the ring, engaging with, you know, that's what, that warmth, that, it, and it starts with, it's always supposed to start with the, with the cast member, never with the person walking in. Their job isn't to get you to talk. Your job is to show your warmth and get them to open up and get them to receive, you know, whatever experience you're trying to give them. So yeah, very, very important. Probably the one of the most number one things. And people, it's it's hard to create warmth. You can't teach that. There's no training videos to teach people how to somebody be to be warm. You're either warm or you're not. And I think that brings on a, a good thing is to at some point during this is to talk a little bit about how to find those people, how to find those warm people and how to fill your salon with them so the second somebody walks in your salon, they feel it. It's in the atmosphere. Well, you, you, you brought up something very important, David. You said how to find them. Let me, let me show you something here. And I want to talk about, this is a, another thing I mentioned earlier that uh, has always been a, a fascinating uh, study for me. And it was done many, many years ago, 70, 74, almost 74 years ago. And it's called the Animal School or the School for Animals. And if you get a chance, you should Google it and take a look at uh, what this gentleman put together that many years ago. And really, this is maybe one of the best ways to say it is squirrels have a natural talent for climbing trees as ducks do for flying. The issue with tanning salons is trying to deliver a memorable experience um, is that they often hire ducks to climb trees. And this is absolutely the case. I see it so many times because... Um, a lot of our work with salons is, is marketing, but I would say a bigger percentage, probably 60%, is with the human resource side. And I'll interview someone, um, I'll, I'll go down, I'll go around and I'll do a tour of the stores or the salons and I'll meet the managers and I'll have somebody with that natural warmth or those natural talents and I'll say, whoa, this has really been, a, that's, this was really a good hire. And then I'll meet somebody else and I think, this is definitely uh, a duck that we've asked to climb trees because they don't have this natural ability. And I'm going to show you something that we found out. The average salon owner, and this is over several years of studying this, the average salon owner spends many hours in researching and purchasing tanning equipment as they absolutely should. The average hiring design, the average hiring decision time spent for tanning consultants, you should almost have a drub roll here, about 45 minutes. And that's really kind of a sad commentary because, yes, uh, buying a, a, a very expensive piece of equipment is an important decision, and you should spend lots of time. No one is saying that you shouldn't spend lots of time on what equipment that you buy. But just think about how important the equipment is of that person behind the counter. That is, that's where your experience. And I think, uh, David, you'd agree with me that of all of the things we've talked about today, that is numero uno in experience. It's that person behind the counter. It makes all the difference in the world. And you brought up earlier, David, um, about where you find them. Uh, well, and just, I'm going to... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say, just look at, the, look at the facts. Look at in your own... Take, take stock right now in your, own, uh, in your own mind over the last two years as an owner, as a manager. How many times has that awful job applicant slipped by your airtight, I go by my gut feeling interview technique. Yes, yes. And don't worry, really? we all do it. We've all done yep. that. I've done that. I've done that. And here's the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to lose money. It's one of the biggest ways you can lose money. And, and then also ask yourself, on the other hand, how many, you ever wondered to yourself how many times that that young, gifted, all-star, warm, sales genius able to sell anything to anyone? and make anyone feel good about themselves, ended up the reigning champion seller down the street at your competitor's salon, that's what's at stake here. So that's what's at stake. So, it, it, But it can be easily fixed 
with some with some um, with a better plan on how you find these people, a better plan on how you interview these people. And that's um, last year of the 22 webinars we gave last year. We did one specifically, David, on recruiting, interviewing, and hiring. Oh, and we'll do another one this year. Uh, it, it, you know what Tony and I are trying to do is juggle the subjects and and when we do them because we're we're doing less of the webinars this year just because. Uh, you know, last year 22 was like crazy. Between that and client uh, uh, load, there was just I couldn't handle it all. I'm, I'm just I'm too well, much. Well, yeah, when you do the PowerPoint up to three minutes before the presentation, I can see why they're hard, John. <laughs> Let's be honest That's, there. Yeah. Well, three minutes. This, I thought this minute PowerPoint and a half. just got made, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad for making it <laughs> ten minutes before the presentation. Well, and they could probably tell it just got made too. So, uh, so let's, I love the use move. of purple and red on here, John. That was a that was a great. Well, I, you know, the, it, it's the it's the gregariousness in me. I like the colors. You know, I mean, matter of fact, I'm going to buy one of your shirts because I, I, I kind of, I'm jealous. You know. Um, well, let's let me uh, kind of move on here for a second. I want to show you um, what you can do when you've got a, a, a natural, and you guys have that are on this call. You've seen this person before. Uh, again, I want to introduce Savannah McCullough. She is the salon manager at Tropicana in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. It's a Nashville uh, suburb, and um, she is one of the very best. And for 24 years, I've worked with an awful lot of them. But she is absolutely fantastic. And she she just gets a little cute here. She says, "Just try to get out of my salon without buying something." I dare you. But mm -hmm. she has been a fabulous lady to work with. She's great with lotion, session sales, and and again, I want to remind you of what happened when we inserted this natural manager, this lady that had this great empathy skills and just everything about her and the way that she managed her people, and so. This is what happened when we inserted her and created a whole new selling culture um, in that salon. And the turnaround in numbers, and, and I can share these uh, numbers with you. Well, first of all, they're percentages because Alex Fredrickson, who owns the salon, has given me permission to do that. And you probably saw this uh, on a webinar last year, but in January 2013, they were down 18.2% to 2012. And then February they were uh, they were up actually up 10 percent, but then March they crashed again 8.9 percent from 2012. Now up to this point, up to this point, they had from 2009 on they had only had one or two months in those four years where they were either uh, even or ahead of the same month the year before, which meant that there was a decay. And his business and the Tropicana business continued to go down and down and down. Now, I, of course, will tell you that one of the things that helped Alex considerably is he <clears throat> brought us on to help him. But anyway, so what we did is I think one of the best things that we ever did for Alex is that we found uh, Savannah. So what happened, her very first month on the job, we were able to change the selling culture. People saw that we were serious, the employees saw that we were serious about making this a great place to work and a great place to sell. In April, he absolutely blew out the jams, up 43%. Uh, May, up another 46%. June, up 49.2%. I mean, it, the numbers just kept getting better and better. And and it got to a point where we were finally, we thought, can this continue to go on? And it did start to slack off. You can't keep these kind of increases going forever. But last year, Tropicana ended up 22% ahead of 2012. And I, I tell you, I, I'd like to tell you it's because they had a wonderful consultant, but I've got to be honest with you and tell you that I think the, the only thing wonderful that I did or was part of is to find Savannah. And she was a natural, and I, can, I could give you a list of 15 or 20 naturals that I've been involved with recruiting and hiring. makes all the difference in the world. And the experience now when you go into Tropicana, Tropicana, by the way, has this enormous mega chain whose name I won't mention, that has a outlet only uh, 300 feet away from them, across the street and down a block. So, you know, they they've really turned their act around, and it's all because of this natural thing. Now, I'm going to move to questions here in a second. And just one slide I want to show you: to, Should you uh, use a consultant to reset your salon company? Well, there's a, a bunch of reasons there. We serve uh, only the retail tanning community, and uh, we've uh, had successes with hundreds of salons, and you know, it's, uh, oh, I should have taken the Winter Fair out. I was at the Winter Fair there in uh, uh, Kansas City. But 
Uh, no two salon companies are alike, so nothing that we do is packaged. Now, some of the stuff that David does, uh, the, the wizard here, he does some things that are more packaged, uh, but they're very technical. Like he has an app for Facebook where you can do contests and uh, that kind of stuff that is so incredibly cool. Uh, I just wish I understood it because remember that I'm the dumb dad. So, um, And if you need a free uh, consultation, you can go to johnrfr.com and sign up. And uh, I have to share this with you. Um, I have, uh, if I can get the darn thing to work here, uh, hold on to your questions here. I want to show you something that's really kind of cool because uh, this just came up recently. If I can get this. <laughs> yes, okay. This is called a meme, M-E-M-E. Now, what this is, is uh, a Facebook thing that you put it on Facebook, and um, uh, John Ribner of um, uh, IST Magazine introduced me to this concept. Have you ever seen this before, David McFarland? No, I haven't, to be Yeah, I had, I had, well, not that I would. I mean, uh, uh, David the Wizard has seen it, but this is really cool. And I would recommend this to anybody that's on this call from a marketing point of view. If you can get a client, a customer, that will talk wonderfully about uh, your salon and you know get their picture and their testimonial. You put it on Facebook, and so um, I, some of the clients I've been working with now have given me these, and we put them on. And I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, David McFarland, what do you think of this? Pretty sweet, pretty good yeah. accolade. You know, like like especially if you had that being done, uh, you know, at, at your salon, um, you know, and on on the salon social media, nothing like a glowing reviews like that it's you know it's kind of a it's kind of a reminder to all the people that go there why they go there and it probably well, attracts new customers too well if you'd be interested david i'll ask brad blair if he'll um, if he'll loan you that chain he's got there cuz uh, i already have that one in the oh, you've already got that one okay. on it, and mine's <laughs> a little bit bigger than that so i'm good <laughs> Okay, I want to give one more pitch here before we start answering questions about the Sun is Life training modules. Uh, you can go to, of course, uh, facebook.com, Sun is Life. And this Sun is Life uh, training program is, uh, I just had a client that his people completed it. This is about a month ago, and they, they raved about it. It is so comprehensive what Tony Brown has put together because it's not just certification, but he's got so much education there that you can get your employees educated over and get them that certification is just so important so and he could always of course uh, use some likes we all want uh, likes and uh, uh, I wouldn't mind having a few and again if you want the package we I keep telling you this if you want uh, questions because uh, David McFarland talked about uh, what do you do in an interview so we've got uh, questions on there the mystery shopping form which I talked about or secret shopping all of that stuff that you see there is all available so what I'd like to do is um, hand this over now and get the audience because we're running a little late here but get the audience if you've got some questions uh, please bring them up right now and um, David McFarland while we're waiting for people to throw some things in here mm -hmm. do you have some comments that you'd like to make well um, I, I would just like to close um, with this I would like um, I, I think this is a lot to swallow to to let to let a, a whole industry know that they're kind of in the middle, I mean, they're in the middle of moving from one type of an economy to another. And that's a lot to swallow, like, because everybody's used to doing business in that one type of economy, which was really the service economy is what they called it. Now that this experience economy's like taking over, and that's going to be, you're going you're gonna to have to operate. I want you to take a big, deep breath of reality and just come to grips with the fact that by, by providing the expected goods and services that tanning salons normally provide isn't enough. It's never going to be enough for your guests to become what I like to call raving fans of your salon. And um, I, I think that if you embrace that new economy called the experience economy, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to open up a lot of brand new doors for you. It's going to open up a lot more opportunity for you. So embrace this. Embrace this. This is an opportunity, and you don't get this very often. You don't get an opportunity to get in on the ground level of a new economy, economy that's just taken hold. So, um, you know, embrace it and uh, and have fun with it. And remember that your your business, your salon, is a theater, and treat it that way. You know, cast members and actors, and a great person to look at this as inspiration is look at Walt Disney. 
and he was one of the pioneers of creating an experience. And um, you know, if you ever get kind of lost on what you're doing, and and you you know, you can always um, email me. I'm sure I'll have some input for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's about it. That's a, that that that's my closing uh, my closing thing. And what an amazing topic to talk about. I, I I agree with uh, I agree with everything. I mean, it's uh, it, this is the way that we have to go. We've got to make this an experience. Tony, you have uh, some comments you want to throw in here. Tony checked out. He left. He had to leave. Is it, is it something that one of us said, or would, you know? I think so. I think he got angry with angry with me. I think he did too. Uh, okay, David, why don't you uh, explain the? Um, I, I don't see any questions here that we haven't answered. So, uh, uh, David McFarland, we either did a great job or we put everybody into a coma. I'm not sure what it is, but unless uh, David is uh, seeing some questions, I'm not seeing here. Um, I don't see any questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, David Farr, would you uh, explain the um, uh, the exit polls and uh, uh, what we're trying to get done here? Yeah. So we're going to close down the webinar, folks, in just a tiny bit. When we do, the survey should pop up, and we really appreciate it if you just take a quick moment or two to fill it out with your uh, your feedback, and uh, we really appreciate you attending today. Fantastic, and uh, Tony, wherever you are, thank you, and David McFarland, you were wonderful, uh, wonderful having you on, and uh, David the Wizard, thanks again, and folks, we will see you on March the 6th is the next webinar, uh, I believe that's the date, it's Thursday, March the 6th at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, hope you will join us, this is going to be kind of a best of the best webinar, we're going to have three very successful retailers on, we're going to talk about the things they do to make themselves super successful. So thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you all on March the 6th. Goodbye, all. Happy lotion selling. Hope you guys all do great. It was a blast. <laughs> all right. Have a good one.